So, I, uh, when I was in multiple places at the same time, um, I was also with my body, like I had said, not just dealing with being shown and taught things. Um, I had a whole search team searching for me through the field and through the river here. There was a dive team and, you know, I mean, there was tons of people, helicopters. I mean, it was surrounded. Thank you. Every single one of you. For years, I had had many people come to me and be like, oh, you're, you know, and I was one of the, you know, or, you know, my uncle or whatever, right? Um, that kind of a deal was just like, you know, I was in the search team or my uncle kind of thing was in the search team or something like that. And uh, to all the people that were there searching for me, thank you very much. I didn't mean to make it a difficult experience for you, a difficult night for you. And... I'm sorry that my situation had to pull you away from your evening. Um, the driveway out here in the driveway with the garage being that I was in the garage when I was found. Um, there's like the garage door here and then on the side there's, you know, the um, porch, doorway to the porch. And uh, right in front of the garage is where they laid my body down. And I was really upset for a long time because I just got a pair of shoes. And I didn't really know until years later why, but I was really upset. They uh, cut my shoes off. They cut all my clothes off, but they had to cut my shoes off, um, which I understood later on uh, that that was because of pulling. And... Um, I had received a text a moment ago, um, a few minutes ago, you know, from a friend of mine. His name's Matt out in L.A. And, you know, he's like, I'm watching and, you know, I want to know, like, you know, how did you die? And and so I'm like, thank you, you know, for watching that kind of a thing. And I'm just like, um, I'm currently uploading part three and, you know, maybe I'll do one, maybe two more, whatever, and, and talking about this particular subject in the whole God Bless Freemasonry series that I'm doing, this show that I'm doing here on YouTube, which is, in fact, the Quantum Mechanics of Enlightenment and Freemasonry, and it is to educate people. So I, you know like you kind of gathered in the last couple episodes on this subject, part one, two, three, um, that I'm kind of questioning, do I tell people what I did? Maybe in time I'll tell people what I did, whatever, um, not just what happened, right? And so he wrote back he wanted me to tell him. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll take that as my answer. And I'll tell you how I killed myself, accidentally. Keep that in mind. Please use this information to help and not harm. So if you know anyone going through the same situation, help them. Um, and when I mention what I did to cause my death, Please don't go out and do it. I've had some friends, like I've said, go and do the same thing, and I don't want that kind of an experience. I want this to help people versus ultimately causing their own demise, you know? Um, so I had been watching and weaving my way through the crowd up to like what are you doing what are you doing and they're doing all this stuff to a body and it was mine 
I was also, like I said, over on the other side and being shown and taught and communicated to. And I was also rising above the garage and the house and able to see in the field in the back of my grandmother's house here. Um, it was a, you know, it's how it is. So... I refer to it as having an OD. I did not do it with drugs, though I refer to it as an OD. Um, I had spent many years at that point partying, and in the end, it felt for a while that kind of like summer's over, the party's over, and I wasn't ready to have that end. I wanted to party. So a month before the accident, nothing was working for me anymore. And somewhere along the way, without being told by anyone, physically because we did end up after I had already begun doing this having stuff being shown to us in school about this and I've had people tell me that oh it's because I did that or because we had seen all this in like health class or whatever you know what I mean because I don't really know if it was health class or not and that whole time period just turned out to be a blur to me um, I was out in the garage and I was huffing gas. And if you know anyone that does huffing, will you please stop them and get them to never do that again? Because you don't know if they're going to be able to come back if they do die. And you don't want to lose anyone that you care about. And I don't want to find out that anyone has done this because of my being honest and open and trying to help people. I would like to know that I've been able to help people with this. And not just the whole series, this whole show that I'm doing, God Bless Freemasonry, the Quantum Mechanics of Enlightenment and Freemasonry, but in this particular part. Um... So, I had said my, you know, my head went down. I was slumped over my body for so long that it, it killed my legs. I was told I would never walk again. I uh, had a whole team of doctors and professors around my bed from some of the top universities and telling me I, I shouldn't be here and I, that medically it's not possible for me to come back and and that I'll never be able to walk again and they wheeled in a wheelchair and told me to get used to it you know they didn't really have any compassion and I get it you know over time being a doctor you lose your sense of humility or humanity or whatever you want to call it and you know in a moment it might be a little too harsh in the way that you're used to saying, but if you're a doctor, be nice to people. Um, don't lose that sense of humanity or humility, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, I had huffed so much gas that it turned a liquid inside me and started pouring out of my pores. And where it was coming out of my pores, I got third-degree burns. So on my arms and my legs and all, I, I got third-degree burns. My body and my feet, you know, had swollen up. My hair was bleaching out and everything from this moment. Um, I was ballooning out, you know, puffing up. I was dead. And, um... I was doing it with a gas can 
and it melted my mouth, the flesh on my mouth, to the can. And they had to pull me off, my mouth being sealed, melted flesh to the can, you know. Thankfully not bad, I mean, but, um, it was rough. I would never do that again kind of deal if I, you know, but, uh, please don't let anyone do that. I mean, educate people and let people know that accidents happen. And don't go and do it yourself. Because it's it's not good. Um, my experiences changed me. Throughout all of these years. Death is always with me in my mind and thoughts and everything and some people have told me like oh you shouldn't focus on that I can't help that I see through the eyes of life and death at the same time and that I've been able to utilize to my advantage with trying to release typical human moments of, you know, like if I'm mad at this situation or mad at that situation um, or person or something, I can look back and be like, um, in the grand scheme of life kind of deal, when you look back on it all, that's not really important, so let it go, you know? So it... I'm trying to learn from this constantly to be a better human being and, and, and do good on this planet. And um, I'm really hoping that if anyone out there has a problem with, you know, drugs or drinking or is depressed and has thoughts, don't have them. Don't do these things. Because... Years later, and I'll say it this way, um, I had had a friend of mine who since passed, um, he was a paralegal for me, and uh, he told me the way he told his children about, you know, drugs and, and alcohol, and that was that drugs are designed to work, and they work, and that seems a little weird sounds a little weird but it's that way it's it's true you know um you don't have a say and i didn't and i know uh when it comes to drugs i grew up a metalhead guitar player um one of the people that I have always been a fan of. His name is Dave Mustaine. And he had said like in the 80s or 90s. I think it was in the 90s though, right? Um, that, you know, drugs are like dancing with a gorilla. You know, like you don't stop until the gorilla's done. Um, and I think he actually said something other than dancing. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, it's always stuck with me and that's always true. It, it really is true like when you have addictions um, you don't stop until the gorilla is done um, and they are like a gorilla they are bigger than you they have more power than you and you can't walk into a room with a gorilla and think you're going to tell it what to do so don't think that a time or two of having a good time at night with your friends out on the town, 
you know, you'll be all right because you may end up with an addiction that you can't control and you may end up even just from one experience. It may be your last experience. So please learn from this. If you know anyone that's using drugs or drinking or partying in any way kind of deal, you know, do all you can to help them or yourself. Because um, you don't want to die before your time, so to speak. And you don't want anyone else you love to have the same situation. Now, when it comes to huffing, uh, it drowns your brain. And I have so much, it turned a liquid inside me, started coming out of my pores, and what came out gave me third degree burns. Um, I have nerve damage throughout the rest of my body in my life and may last for the rest of my life. I remember every detail from being in a bag with needles um, to clawing my way out of the bag while I was in the ambulance and being told to just calm down and they, you know, pump me with charcoal to help, you know, get me to throw that up and what wasn't yet coming out of my pores to help clean me out and, um, I threw up. I was terrified all at the same time. And when I came back to life, I was slammed in my body and uh, it hurt. It's excruciating pain and I've been in physical pain ever since. And I've told a lot of you that, that I've, I've been in agony ever since. And I may always, I'm not sure. I do have nerve damage. Um, I believe it's fibromyalgia I've taken medications for, and, and you all know that I have stopped. I won't take those medications anymore because it's not healthy for me. I believe my creator, my source, my God, my love, my Shiva, whatever you want to call it, um, will help me with cleaning up my body from the medications that I've been on and allow me to remember once again. Um, so things that I've been trying to study, you know, these medications are like not helping me remember, you know, what I'm studying. And that's not right for me, you know, especially since I still have yet to do my proficiency for my third degree so that I can be a Shriner. And I really want to help children. And, you know, like I've said before, be the Grand Rabbit, the Easter Bunny, you know, for children. And that means the world to me. I'm grateful I got to come back. And the reason why I want to help children, not just everyone else on the planet, is because I had this happen to me as a child. And I believe children should be allowed to stay children for as long as they can and not be forced into a situation uh, where they have to grow up faster than they should. Um, I myself was raised in a bar. My grandmother owned it, and um, I grew up, you know, a little differently from people, you know, a little more, less of a child and more of an adult. And was that to my advantage? Maybe. Uh, was it a good thing? Maybe. Maybe not, you know. It... Everything happens for a reason. Now, I'm going to try and make this the last video. I'm already at 19. There may end up being one more on this particular subject. Give me a minute and I'll let you know. <laughs> but, uh, if you know anyone that's done this as far as you know huffing get them off of it don't let them do it and don't you do it I've lost friends along the way because they have known what I did and they went on to go and do that themselves and I didn't get to see them anymore 
and I don't want that to happen ever again. But if somebody can learn from this and grow from this and I can help stop someone from doing what I have done, I would feel this is worth talking about, okay? Um, drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to stop here because we're already at 20. I may, in fact, do one more as a part five, and I may not. I'm not sure because I do have a lot more to say, unfortunately. Please feel free to subscribe and like on the videos, comment, share them with your friends and your family, watch them over and over and over again. I am having these videos monetized. I need the money right now, dude, like, because I'm here in New York with my family and I'm not really working at the moment and this I could use the money from. Um, so... I love you guys. Namaste. I am that I am. Grateful for every one of you. Namaste, my babies.